Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and yesterday quite a few people when I made my video about lactose intolerance felt the need to chime in and discuss raw milk, and uh, rather than insult people because people simply don't know the truth, they hear certain uh, theories online, they hear certain stories, and they just make their own assumptions and they don't understand why there are actually laws regulating things like raw milk versus pasteurized milk, and let's look at this from a common sense perspective and just look at the evidence and the weight of evidence out there. And I hope that by the end of this, those of you who are considering raw milk or who are drinking raw milk are gonna at least rethink your decision because I don't wanna tell people what they can and cannot do. I'm not a believer in that. I'm not a massive believer in government regulation of behavior of adults and what they do with their own bodies. I am a believer in education and people making their own personal choices. And in this case, let's really look at raw milk. A lot of people came in and they stated uh, that, well, raw milk is better for you, it's healthier, and it stops lactose intolerance. That lactose intolerance is caused because of the pasteurization and removing the, the lactase enzyme in the milk. And uh, I'm gonna link for you guys a study down below, a more recent study. This study found that there is zero impact on lactose intolerance by consuming raw milk. That raw milk in no way reduces lactose intolerance in any measurable way that the, the scientists and researchers could determine. Furthermore, they determined that there were no measurable health benefits of drinking it uh, over regular milk. And uh, that's really interesting because when this has actually been studied, it doesn't actually seem to be true. People are saying, well, whatever issue I have going away, maybe that's anecdote, maybe it's rare, maybe it is psychosomatic in your mind, but the weight of the evidence is not showing that what people say about lactose intolerance and raw milk, that there's any truth to it. So when there's no evidence that uh, something physiological and biological in the body actually happens when we measure it, then maybe there's a, a something else going on that it's not the actual substance. There could be other another factor going on for you personally, the rare individual who claims this. So what is the deal with raw milk? What makes raw milk actually dangerous? I get a lot of people who are like, well, you know, uh, we just use healthy cows and or it's only from grass range cows or whatever. This is what the farmer does who I get mine through or this is how I do it myself. But you guys need to step back and think about it for a minute of the cleaning process necessary for raw milk. If there is no cleaning process for raw milk, people get really, really sick. So much so that like in Utah a couple years back, there was a massive case of 45 people in one area. 45 people got listeria from a single place that distributed raw milk. 45 people in a single week. So that's how bad it can be if the cleaning process is messed up. 45 people. And if you guys look at the data out there, do a little Google searching and see how many people actually get sick inside the United States every year from raw milk, which is actually heavily restricted. It's not that easy to get raw milk. You have to go through extra trouble to get it. And that's the reason for it is it's so rare, yet dozens of people get really sick and in some cases even die from it every single year year in the United States alone. In spite of that, it's actually fairly dangerous. It, it, then when you consider there's no evidence of actual health benefits, this is something you have to weigh out. So why is it dangerous? What specifically makes it so dangerous? So again, look at the cleaning process about it. The Look where the udders are on a cow that you're milking it from. I'm not trying to be gross here, but you need to understand how so much E. coli, salmonella, listeria, stuff like that gets in the food, even from perfectly healthy cows. Now, most of you may or may not know, I don't know if you know this, but E. coli is formed naturally inside the colon and fecal matter of virtually every animal on earth. Humans produce it, even the healthiest human on earth. Your feces and your colon is full of tons of E. coli. If you were to put that in your mouth, it could make you sick and kill you. That's why we don't eat poop. That's why we have such a disgust for it. We have an innate disgust for the smell, the taste, everything else as a species because we've evolved to have that because for humans, we can't handle E. coli very well. It kills us. So that's why we avoid it. Whereas in your dog doesn't your dog handles E. coli better than you do. So the thing is, when you think about it, the cows, uh, orifice that they expel fecal matter from is directly up above the udders. The udders are just down below it and slightly to the front, just like at the anatomy of a cow. A cow doesn't use toilet paper. A cow doesn't bathe in soapy water. So the entire backside of that animal is covered in massive amounts of E. coli, Listeria, Salmonella, Strephalococcus, all of this is the breeding ground from fecal matter because their whole backside gets covered in fecal matter. Their tail gets covered in it. Their tail swishes around even when you milk them. So in order to make raw milk 
relatively safe to drop the bacteria count, you actually have to scrub all the udders, the entire backside of the cow, uh, its anus, and its tail with soapy water, peroxide, things like that. You have to scrub all of that off and somewhat sterilize that region, region before you milk a cow if you, you want that to be safe. And uh, the same thing, even if you use a machine to do it, that's if someone hand milks. If they use a machine to do it, it's the same thing. They have to scrub those udders. Now, they have to be scrubbed legally for even uh, large-scale production milk that is pasteurized. For someone who's going to do raw milk, that level of scrubbing isn't good enough. You're actually going to have to sterilize the entire udder every time you milk the cow and sterilize all the pumps and everything again before you put them on a new cow. So there's a lot of extra work involved to do that. And if any mistake is made, then guess what? You get all that bacteria, potentially deadly bacteria, inside the milk. You don't pasteurize it, guess what happens? You get sick, anyone who drinks it. And that's why raw milk is such a big deal because there's so many extra steps required in sterilizing it because there's fecal matter all over the udders of a cow once the milk pump is unhooked and it's out doing its own thing. So <laughs> it, it's a massive bacteria-ridden region and it's very, very difficult to get that clean enough to actually get milk from without the risk of harming people. And, and it's so difficult that apparently when you look at the statistics, so many people get sick in the U.S., even though less than 1% of people, far less than 1% of people in our country even consume raw milk, a pretty big chunk of the people who do still manage to get sick from it. And someone says, well, I've been drinking it for many years and I've been lucky and I haven't caught anything. Yeah, but you're, you've been lucky. I also know people who claim that they've been injecting anabolic steroids for 20 years who don't clean the area. They don't take a shower first to clean the bacteria off their skin or use alcohol wipes or anything and they've never got an infection. Yeah, there's a reason for that. It's called they got lucky. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.